Hello. Welcome to the OSAC Glacier Climbing Course video series. My name is Bryce Milton. Today we're going to go through tying into either the end, uh, either the front or the end of a glacier climbing rope. Uh, first up, uh, first step is uh, putting on your climbing harness. This is the Black Diamond Alpine Bod. Um, it's a good choice for Mount Rainier glacier climbing. Not so good a choice for rock climbing because it doesn't have all the padding that would make it comfortable to hang out in for long periods of time. Uh, after you get your, after you select your climbing harness, make sure you have read the manual and familiarized yourself with its operation in detail. In this particular model, you pass it once through the bottle, uh, through the buckle here, second time through the other end, and then, crucially, you need to come back and double it through. That's uh, how you uh, double back the knot. Pretty much all harnesses you find are going to have some form of that. Then you take the uh, the leg loop, and you go ahead and buckle that in. Some are step-in models. These are these are buckled. Um, on this, with uh, make sure that you have have your uh, adjustment on this doubled over as well per the uh, manual's instruction. Do it on both sides. The uh, next step is to go ahead and take your uh, pear-shaped locking carabiner and have the skinny end towards you and the fat end pointing away with the gate on top. Hold it like that. To press the gate and loop it both through the waist and the leg strap there. Bring it around and that ends it up so that the gate is in the uh, position that I can be able to operate with this with later on. Okay. Next step is to go ahead and take the personal anchor. It's got, uh, it's got a loop on the end and you loop it through both of those items, uh, both the waist and the uh, leg straps as well. Pull it through in what's called a girth hitch. Refer to the notes, the link in the notes on how to tie that girth hitch. Um, and then on this, it's a daisy chain, so you collect up the loops and you take a locking beaner and a standard beaner and you clip those off on the accessory loop so that this is not dangling and it's secure and accessible and ready to deploy. The next step is going to be to take your chest harness. Okay, go ahead and make a circle. Flip it over like this, so you got a figure of eight. Put your arms through the figure of eight. Cross it over behind you. And then rotate your knot, your water knot, or your, uh, your sewn loop down to wherever that's going to be comfortable for you. And then, uh, so you can see, I've got this cross behind me. And then you go ahead and take a beaner, just a standard oval non-locking beaner, and you clip that off in front of you. And that's going to clip into a rope if you're dangling from, you know, if, if, if you uh, need to stay upright on it. Otherwise, it just kind of sits there. Next step is to go ahead and take the, uh, the end of the rope. Take a nice long arm's worth or so. Tie a figure eight knot. Refer to the links on how to tie this. Okay. Then take it through the proper tie-in process for your particular harness. In mine, you go through the leg loop, then you go through the waist strap, bring it up, bring that knot close to you, and then you reweave the figure of eight with the tail end, carefully, following the course of the original figure of eight through there. Dress it nicely as you go, and at the end of this, you have a, nicely, a nice, neat, properly dressed figure of eight knot with a good tail. That was why we took that long arm's length there. So I've got this tail, and now I'm going to go ahead and do a half fisherman's knot through this. I have enough tail on this one that I, have, uh, that I can take three, loop, uh, three wraps. If uh, uh, Sometimes you might only be able to take one. So, uh, usually you want to get around two. All right, so now I have this tied off in a, in a good uh, fisherman's knot knot and uh, so it's double it's 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 a uh, doubled up there backed up next step is to go ahead and take your leg prussics your, your, your foot prussics go ahead and uh, take the loop over here pass it through the loop three times one two three okay and then go ahead and take up the slack and dress up your knot neatly Okay. 
All right. So when properly dressed, this knot looks like this and operates like this. It's a friction knot. So I can slide it with my hand, but take, load it and it'll, it'll, it'll bite into the rope nicely. So I take that down to here and then I can either stuff it in a pocket or uh, I've got say, a, a double-sided uh, Velcro on here specifically for this purpose to go ahead and wrap it around my leg strap. And that gets it in a spot where it's not in my pockets. I can use that for other stuff. It's out of the way. There's nothing dangling too bad. Then you go ahead and take the, uh, the harness prussic and you go ahead and uh, place the, uh, the fisherman's knot on top of your rope. Pass it inside, one, two, three. And then as you pull this tight, go ahead and make sure you're pulling one side a little harder than the other to make it so that the knot isn't in the very middle. It's offset a little bit. Then go ahead and dress up your knot to make sure, make it easy for other climbers to inspect you and to aid the proper function of this friction knot. And again, there we have a properly dressed pressing knot. Check its function. I've got the right number of wraps on there for this thickness of rope. Um, sometimes, depending on the thickness of your prusik or the climbing rope, you might need a different number of wraps as you make your prusik there, but three seems to work per per perfectly for this right here. Then I take the end of this and I clip it into my pear-shaped carabiner here. All right. The uh, next step there is I'm going to take my, my uh, Ice axe's leash, and I'm going to clip that in here as well, and then I'm going to lock this. Got to make sure that this is locked when you're done. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my hero loop, belay device, and rescue pulley, and go ahead and uh, clip these into a uh, beaner off on my accessory loop. Again, nothing dangling too bad here. And now I'll go ahead and uh, take my pack. So on your pack, you need to have a, uh, a leash that's uh, either to the hull strap or a good uh, accessory loop. Um, you can use a runner for this or you can use a 550 paracord, which, because uh, this is only ever going to hold, you know, the pack's weight in a, in a fairly static manner. So it's okay to, 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 uh, to use a paracord for this uh, application. Um, so you go ahead and uh, tie this in between and you make sure that it's dangling down between your shoulder blades when you put it on, and so it's, it should rest back here, okay? It's got to be long enough that you can get at it between your legs to clip it onto a bite of rope, but not so long that once you've clipped it off onto your, your uh, climbing harness, that you have a, a big long loop dangling down behind you as you walk. Okay, notice that I, I clipped this into my climbing harness and not onto my pack because you want it's secured to you instead of to itself should you separate. Okay, there's my waist strap, my sternum strap, and let's go ahead and check me out real quick. So I've got my beaner is fat end out, skinny end end, gate on top locked with my harness prussic inside of it, my uh, uh, ice axe leash in there, my foot prussics are below my harness prussic. That's important, so because this needs to be on top when you're uh, to, uh, for proper operation. I've got my personal anchor in. All my accessories are secure, and uh, yeah, everything's good. So uh, keep climbing mountains and don't slip.